All right, let's uh, talk about uh, single page applications, or uh, often referred to as SPAs. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, um, the, the uh, classical way of uh, implementing uh, websites today is that uh, you have uh, various uh, pages, right? And, uh, and, and these pages uh, allow you to navigate between them, right? So these pages might have hyperlinks, that allow you to navigate from one document to the next, right? Uh, and that's all uh, well and good. It, uh, and what the browser does is that um, as it displays one or another page, it, it unloads the old page and it gets replaced by a brand new page, okay? Uh, and uh, and that, that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with, with that. Um, um, the, the problem starts to, be, so it starts to be apparent once you start considering that some of these pages uh, might be dynamic, right? Uh, where, uh, for instance, we might be want, we might actually be wanting to um, interact with a particular page, uh, and as we as we interact with that page, the page changes over time. Right? So, for instance, uh, you might have a uh, uh, a shopping cart that might have uh, different uh, items. Uh, and as you interact with, uh, with that shopping cart, you might be removing something from the shopping cart, right? Or maybe you're changing the, uh, the, the number of items uh, for a particular, for, for a particular uh, the quantity for, for a particular item, right? And, and, the, and the page needs to be dynamically re-rendered, right, with the new data. Right? Uh, currently, the only way that we know how to do that is to, um, you know, if, if, a change, if a change happens, for instance, if we Remove something from the uh, from the um, uh, from from this page is to go back to the server and notify the server that this has happened, right? That uh, that somebody has removed an element. Okay, uh, the server uh, would then run some code, right? Run some code and uh, maybe go out and, and update uh, some information in the database that perhaps an item has been removed or or the quantity has changed, right? Uh, and uh, and then. And then the code would, would come back with us with a new version of the page, right? A new version of the page where that new page perhaps doesn't contain this this uh, this element anymore, right? Um, or if we change the uh, the quantity, uh, then a, a recalculated total uh, value of the shopping cart, perhaps. Yes, right? Uh, and the way this is done is that what what the uh, what the browser sees, what the browser sees is that. As, as far as the browser is concerned, the entire page is uh, thrown away, right? And, and a new page is re-rendered in its place. Okay, you know, for, from our point of view as as users, it's the same page, right? But it has slightly changed, right? It doesn't have an item here. Maybe the quantity has changed and whatnot. Yes, but but from the browser's point of view, it's an entirely new page. Right? It threw away the entire HTML. And it reloaded an entire new HTML. It looks almost the same. Your 90% of it is the same, right? Uh, uh, so there's a there's, there's quite a bit of a, of misuse of resources here, right? Because uh, just because we're at, we're removing just one little item and perhaps updating a little piece here of HTML, the entire HTML was thrown away, right? And it was re-rendered from scratch. You see that? So there's a lot of opportunities to to optimize that. Well, ideally, uh, would have been, what would have been nice is that the same page would have stayed, right? And instead of throwing away the entire content, we could have perhaps locally, right, used JavaScript to to uh, modify and just remove this one div, maybe, perhaps, right? Or update this little span here, right? But can, but maintain the same, most of the same content. That would have been much more effective, right? Much, much more u better use of uh, of the resources. Always notifying the server what's going on, right? That we removed an item. We should go back to the server and let the server know that yes, this item no longer is a shopping cart, right? And we need a new value, new new uh, a new uh, cost for the for the, for the whole uh, shopping cart. So the so the server would have calculated all this thing, right? It would cut, would have come back with a new. Uh, with a new list of elements and um, and perhaps a new price or cost for the for, for the entire um, for the entire cart, right? And and uh, so we would have had the same effect, right, of not having an item, 
having updated the, the class by without having to throw out the entire page. Yes? Right? So, so this, this, uh, this notion of, of reusing most of the content and updating only you know, strategic pieces of the original content right, uh, you know, became, a, uh, became more and more popular over, over uh, uh, several uh, years. Right? Uh, and, and, uh, and, and the idea became, became so popular that it says, wait a minute, but you know, not just this page, we could apply the same idea all throughout many different pages. Right? And, and it became so popular that, that uh, eventually uh, this idea, well, what if we, what if um, we start using the server not, not, not as a rendering engine, but only as a data store? You know, because this is what would happen if we do for the shopping cart, right? right? Uh, we would be uh, handling the rendering right, of removing elements or updating little pieces of it here on the, on the browser side, using JavaScript running on the browser side, and we would only be using the, the server to, as a data store, saying that this item is no longer in the, data, in the, in the, in the shopping cart. Give me a new list of items. Right? But the rendering is not handled on the server, it's handled on the client side. Does that make sense? So this idea became more and more popular right, over several generations, right? and, and libraries started to be designed specifically for doing this. Right? For breaking the uh, the um, breaking the um, uh, the responsibilities away, the, the responsibilities of rendering the page uh, now became more the responsibility on the browser side than on the server side. Right. Uh, so there was a big shift uh, about ten years ago, uh, where you know especially uh, you know, Google started using this idea uh, for all their products. Right. You know, uh, uh, Google Calendar, Google uh, Maps, and um, where they started looking at this. So how can we break this and, and do all our, our rendering com computation here on the client side and only use it the, the server you know, for retrieving uh, you know, uh, just, just the data. Yes? Right. So, so, so this idea today you know, it's, um, um, has, has uh, been, been uh, implemented in such a way that we're, going, we're no longer going to use the, uh, the, the server for any rendering whatsoever. Right? Instead, uh, we're going to have one big page, okay, uh, that is going to be mostly empty, mostly empty. Right? It's going to have some content at the top that's going to have a content that is, is common to all the pages, right? all the pages, and then it's going to have a placeholder. It's going to have one div, right, that's going to be mostly empty. Well, actually, it is going to be empty. And then we're going to dynamically inject into that diff, right? The the content as we as we navigate from one place to another. Obviously, the, all, all the, the snippets that we're going to inject in here uh, are going to be obviously they are going to still live on the server side, right? Uh, but it is no longer the server who's going to render the content. Instead, we're going to go fetch the HTML, right? Without leaving this page, staying in the same page, we're going to ask the server, hey, give me that little piece of snippet of HTML over there. I'm going to inject it into that placeholder div, right? Uh, by manipulating the DOM, right? Compiling the the the, the, HTML, the 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 static HTML, compiling it, and creating a DOM object that I can just insert into that div, right? Uh, so so that that, uh, that the notion that uh, we're only ever going to navigate to the index page, right? That's going to be our placeholder, our, our landing page. And we're never going to physically navigate away from this page. We're all going to stay here, right? and we're going to inject different content as we, quote unquote, navigate. Right? As we go, as we want to display different different portions, we're going to inject them over here, but never leaving index.html. And that's the notion of a single page application. There's only one page, just the index page, right? Um, and we inject content as as we need to. Does that make sense? Uh, so that's one of the uh, big changes here. One of the big changes. The other change is that uh, many of these libraries, many of these libraries uh, have have um, uh, you know as as um, as applications have become larger and larger on the client side, you know, they've been looking for ways to uh, deal with complexity, right? And um, and the and the server has had a solution for that uh, for for, you know, for several years. The uh, model view controller. 
And that's what I'm going to uh, talk about next. 